Hi everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and this is the most request I have gotten to create a video and I understand why. But first, let me thank everybody who's taking time out of their busy day to watch the How to Learn Fusion 360 CAM basic series. So if you're new to Fusion and, and CAM generally, check that video out. Uh, I hope that you will find some helpful tips with that one. So I've gotten a few emails and a few comments where people have asked, how are you holding on to complex part in your mill? Especially when you machine the first operation, you flip it over. How are you going to hold on to that? Now for this, it doesn't really matter if you are using Fusion 360, uh, you will still get something out of this video, but of course that's what we're going to use. And as always, I love your comments and any suggestions down in the comment area, and I would appreciate if you would take the time to also subscribe to the channel. First, one question I've gotten is that in the How to Learn Fusion 360 CAM basic series, I talked about how I prefer to, hold, to pick up the part in the upper left corner. Now, my reason for that is that in the upper uh, side is where your solid jaw are on your vise, where on the lower end you have the movable jaw, and the movable jaw actually has some play in it. So the solid jaw is definitely the most stable, and that's why I picked that one. The reason that I picked the left and not the right, was one of the questions, is just that normally the tool changer is on the left side, uh, so it just makes sense to kind of like pick up closer to the tool changer, but it doesn't really necessarily matter. So I kind of cheated a little bit in the How to Learn Fusion 360 CAM series. Uh, I did talk about the second pickup, but I did not show my part when I flipped it over and it was sitting in the vise. Because one of the things you run into there is that the raw stock can kind of be in the way. So here you will see uh, the raw stock is kind of blue and the finished stock as, as green. And what I, I normally would do is that I would lay it up against the stop and then to pick it up to get in underneath that edge there is. You could use either one, two, three blocks that you can purchase, or you could also use something, something like this here. And this here is a, um, a little tool steel block, and uh, this one here was actually wired out, YEDM'd out, and then ground to size. I will say that I would make sure that they are pretty accurate. So milling them would probably not be my option. I would probably have them either wired square or grind square. Um, but these are really handy to have around, kind of like lay up at the edge, and you can pick up uh, the side, as you can see here on the screen. So all you really are doing is you're laying the block flush to your finished stock, and then you can pick up the block, and then you can just move in the thickness of the block, and you're kind of like at the phantom edge. But what if the part is a little bit more complex uh, than just a square block? So I have used this specific model uh, in a few tutorials and people have asked, all right, so how are you gonna hold on to this part uh, to machine the back side of it? Um, and my first thought was actually soft jaws to do this. And I'm gonna come back to soft jaws, what that is in a second, uh, but I actually changed my mind and, <laughs> and wanna do a fixture instead when I actually looked at the part a little closer. But first, let me set this up. Notice how in, in this case here, when I used this tutorial, that I had the part sitting above the vise. So I had enough thickness of material that I could actually machine the whole vertical wall around the part and still hold on to the stock in the first operation. Now, that is uh, not always, you're not always as fortunate to do this, but it does mean that you have to buy a little bit thicker material too, but cost uh, a little bit more money. Uh, there's, of course, more to now face off in the second operation. But what it prevents me from doing is to try to blend uh, this if I could not machine the whole uh, vertical uh, side on this. So just think, keep that in mind. Another thing in this, uh, this part here, this is a, um, a race pedal. Uh, for, for the, the throttle on a, on a race car. So the bigger hole in the center is a bushing hole, which means that it is probably have to be very accurate. I'm actually gonna use that as my pickup when I flip the part around. So that's one of the tricks to think about. When you have a part and you have to machine the second side, when you're programming the first side, think about how are you gonna pick this 
uh, piled up in the second operation. So try to think ahead. Because what I would do with this pushing hole is I would definitely make sure that that pushing hole is machined all the way through the stock. And remember, I have all that extra thickness. But I'll make sure I drilled it all the way through the stock. And I would probably also use like a boring operation, a circle milling operation, to really give it a good size all the way through the stock. So when I do flip it over, I can use that as my zero zero. So think about that. If I had not drilled it all the way through, then when I flip it over, it's because the stock is in the way, it's kind of hard to figure out how I'm going to hold on to it. This is one of the tricks. So think ahead. So like I said, when I first looked at this part, I was thinking I was going to talk to you about soft jaws, but that is coming in a bit. Uh, instead, I decided that I was going to create a fixture, and if it's just a few parts you have to make, I would probably just machine it out of some 6061 aluminum, uh, because that's fairly cheap. Um, instead of, but if, if you had a bunch, you could of course do it in steel, and then if you had many, you could like make multiple stations for the second operation. You could put multiple parts out of the machine more, depending on how much size you have on your machines and so forth. This case here, we're just going to use a, a aluminum block uh, to hold on to this part for the second operation. Another thing I'm then going to show you is Mighty Byte clamps. So I'm a huge fan of, uh, of Mighty Byte. I should have a t-shirt or something like that. Um, and I will show you my two favorite ones in this video uh, to use. So that's just as we're getting there. So let me let's roll back to the beginning and I'll show you the step by step how I would create this. So the first thing you actually will see is that I want to open up my vise a little bit. And you might be, uh, you know, triggered to just right click and hit move inside of Fusion 360 and I can just move the jaws back. You will see here quickly that I do actually have some symmetry issues because the solid jaw is moving too, which is not great. Um, but the way you saw that is just going into your operation tree, find that one specific jaw, right click on that one and then hit move. And then I can actually move the jaw uh, back a little bit. Now I'm also going to go ahead and just, you can see here that nothing is really made in my model. So let me just go ahead and also uh, move uh, the parallels back and, and the actually uh, jaw. You could have set all this up. That's probably, you know, when I have a little bit of extra time, I should probably make sure all that is kind of like tied together. But um, this works fine for, for what we're trying to do here. All right, let me just uh, hide the throttle pedal for a second so we can take a little bit uh, closer uh, look at this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start a sketch to make this fixture. And I'm going to do it right on this uh, parallel here. And when I sketch inside of Fusion, um, I'm just going to use like a two-point uh, rectangle in here. Um, I like to kind of like sketch out in the outer area and then tied everything in. And if you hold down the control key while you're sketching, you are actually not snapping to anything. So that's kind of like a nice little uh, thing to uh, to be aware of. So uh, with this done here, I am just going to create um, a few relationship. So we can go in and make this uh, kind of like colony with the backside. So now we, we kind of like place this on, on the backside here. Now, another thing I want to show you here is how we can just measure right inside of Fusion, right? So I can go up on the inspection and I can just click over and I can get the distance here. Now, here's a cool tip if you don't know it. If you double click on that measurements dimensions, it actually copies it, copies it, it, copies it to the clipboard. So now when I go in and place my dimension in here, I can just do an old control Z or control V, sorry, to paste in uh, that that dimension. So now we actually kind of like got it attached to the back edge and now we have uh, you know the the width. Now I'm just gonna move uh, this edge over a little bit so it's out of the way. So then I can create a uh, a relationship between the midpoint of our parallel and then a midpoint on um, on the sketch itself. So now that is tied in. The last thing we have to do here is just really just place a uh, a dimension for the length and I just realized that I'm actually in <laughs> in metric I have been too long and lived too long in the United States to use metrics I'm gonna switch over to inches here and uh, let me just place uh, a dimension uh, here and this number might change uh, when I get a little bit further into my design uh, of this block all right with that I kind of have the uh, the block that I need 
uh, for this part. So let's go ahead and extrude this. So I'm going to right click and go and extrude and select the, the area here. And um, you also just got to make sure you get everything right. So I got to go in and pick that little area there because the boundary of it, pull it up. And here, probably one of the most important things is that you you go in and uh, and you make it a new uh, new body, okay? Um, because if you just hit join, it just joins everything together. So there is the fixture plate, the raw blank that I'm going to use uh, for this part. So fairly simple, but I hope you picked up a couple of tips tips here. All right, let's turn on the the throttle pedal again, and with the throttle pedal here we can now go in and we can actually move that one. So now I'm placing it how I want in the second operation. So I'm just going to use the move tool um, and uh, rotate it around, of course, right? So now we kind of like have it as a second operation. Um, that's pretty, pretty normal. Now here's an important thing that I think is extremely important. And that is you take a moment and make one of the edges straight. And the reason that I want to make one of the edges straight is this is really good when it comes to uh, have to pick it up or, or let's say that you, for example, have to take it out of the vise and put it back into the vise. It's nice to have an edge that you could indicate straight right there, right? So again, just trying to think ahead a little bit about what could happen down the, down the road. And I'm just going to leave it sitting above the vise a little bit because there's, so again, there's different ways that you we could get this part uh, into uh, into our um, fixture here, um, but I want to show you uh, what I will call like more like the the old fashioned way. And when I'm looking at this one here, I actually think I'm going to make the fixture a little bit uh, shorter. It, it's a little long that plate. I'm going to make it a little shorter here, um, and then I just kind of have to shift over my part a little bit. All right, so the first way I want to show you how you can you can create this fixture is I call this probably a little bit old fashioned style. But this is the reason that I left the part hanging above the fixture. That is to project the edges. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just literally going in to your, your sketching and hit project and then you can go around and you can just select all the edges um, around uh, that model here. So you're just clicking and you will see how that the the geometry shows uh, down on the plate itself as I'm projecting it kind of down. Now one thing that I need to warn you about here, there's a little tip here, is that anywhere where the chamfer on this part is not um, kind of like the same size, there will actually be a little bit of a gap in the sketch geometry. I'll show you when I get all done with, with picking everything how you can check that. And I can zoom in on the last corner. You can kind of see how that's a development. So I know that's going to be opening. So let me show you how you can check this. Um, so I'm just going to hide the, the throttle pedal again. So if I go in right now, get out of my sketch, and I go in and say that I want to pull in this, see how I cannot highlight that boundary. I can only select the edges. That's because there is some gaps. Now, there is actually, if you're using a Mac, there is actually an add-in out there that will let you check for gaps. But I use a Windows machine, so I don't have that option. But look here, you can see how there is a little gap. Now, in this case here, I am just going to go in and just connect it with a little sketch line. Just, you know, of course, be careful about that. There's not always you can do this. You might have to develop a little bit of geometry. But as soon as I connect those areas, you will actually see now I can select that boundary uh, by itself. So now I can select it. And I am just going to make a, uh, a cut down here uh, for that. So now I've kind of like created a, a imprint. And I'm going to try to make it a cut, <laughs> not a... 
a <laughs> extrusion up, sorry. Uh, now where I've created this, uh, I now have an imprint, right, for the part to, to, uh, to, to fall into. But there is a little bit of a catch, and anybody who's ever done any machining here will tell me that this is not going to work. And there's two things of this. You always need some kind of a clearance uh, when it comes to uh, to fit, you know, a male piece into a female piece. There always needs to be some kind of a clearance. And then specifically in this part, there's a lot of of, of round corners and they need to be uh, to be opened up. So that's one thing to kind of like just be be thinking about. So really when I'm looking at this model right here, uh, there is probably really only a couple of edges where it would really need to locate against. You could actually hold this part by just having a few dowel pins around on, on the right place and, and push it up against it, right? Um, so in this case here, let me just mark with green what I think is the areas that I'm concerned about this part locating. So I am going to pick up the... the uh, uh, the hole in the center of the throttle pedal. So I definitely want the circular edge to be to a good size. And then I'm probably only going to concern about those edges where I know I'm going to push the part up against. Okay, so these are marked in green. This is really all that is important. The rest of, of the part here could actually be opened up a little bit. And by the way, the way that I would control this size-wise when I'm doing this is um, out of the machine. Because you probably need, you know, maybe 2,000 clearance around the part for this one to actually sit nice and snug inside of this fixture. And I would do it out on the control. I would not do it in the, in, in the cam, just so you're aware. So I would, I would offset the, the, the cutter out there. And remember that in the first video, I talked about how a cutter normally comes in plus zero, minus 3,000. So it's in that span. So you on your machine can use the cutter compensation to kind of like offset it out and play with the size. But one thing I got to do is I got to take care of the corners of this model. So I just wanted to show you quickly here how I would deal with that in Fusion 360. The way I've normally always done it is just to go in and uh, and there's always there's probably 80 different ways to do this. This is just the way I've always done it. Uh, I'm going to go in and create a quick sketch um, and I'm just going to catch the center uh, hole of this uh, of the existing arc and then I'm just gonna make a sketch that is about a hundred thousands bigger um, in diameter than my existing um, the existing circle there already is so when you place the part down it's not going to be stuck in these corners and then I will just literally just go out and create a, a cut uh, so just open these areas up a little bit um, for the part to fit in there. So that will be a cut down here and you can just say, you know, up to, and I can select the bottom face and, uh, and then I have a cut there. And I would also just add a little uh, fill it to this just to, uh, to make it smooth. But now I know, and, and I will do this on the rest of the model. I'm just going to do it on these three corners, but I would actually do it on every radius on this model, except what is marked, uh, except the, the bigger diameter for where our bore is, um, I, would, um, I would open those up so I know that that's not where, where I'm sticking to um, when I'm trying to place the, the part inside of this fixture. Now, another area is this kind of like nose area here that, you know, if, if that that could just be a pain in the neck, first of all, to try to machine and, uh, and, and, and make that fit into. So I would definitely do something uh, with this one. You know, you could go in and open up another sketch. You could do use offsets, for example, uh, and you could sketch out some geometry to make sure that that's not where this model uh, is going to bind up. Uh, so again, when you're looking at trying to design these fixtures, just think about these things. Think about a little bit of a head uh, on how you can do that. 
So I'm not going to completely wrap up this fixture here, but what I wanted to talk about is so how when you put it in there, how you're going to hold on to it. So again, my favorite thing is Mighty Byte. So if you go to MightyByte.com, and I'm not affiliated with these guys at all, but I've used them for years. Um, and I want to show you, here is my two favorite clamps that I've used from them. I think I've used probably just about anything they've made, but this is my uh, go-to. So one is the Pitbull, and that's the one we're going to use here. And the other one is uh, the Uniforce clamp that kind of like spreads, spreads out. Now the Pitbull here, what's really neat is you can just go out and you can download this as a CAD file and then you can bring it into Fusion so you can you can place it. It's more for like visualizing, you know, um, if you want to bring it in. But you definitely want to use the size, uh, the website. And here you can get the numbers of the dimensions that you need to be able to uh, to get this part. So with that, you can uh, put the part down. Uh, you know, we can take the, the, the throttle pedal here and we can bring it down flush to our fixture. Tighten the pitbull clamps, and now we had a uh, a facing operation. So it is a little bit of work to uh, to be able to hold on to this part, but probably what we have to do, especially if we create it out of steel, uh, there's not really any good way to hold on to this part uh, otherwise. So just to recap, uh, I would I would probably if it was just a single one like in in that I had to machine, I would probably just have a sixty sixty one aluminum plate. Um, if you had to make uh, multiple of these parts, I would probably have multiple openings in a bigger plate so I could machine more at the time. Um, so just make sure that when you get the, the mod, when you get your shape in there, that you you do the clearance of it. You need to make it a little bit bigger, uh, probably a couple of thousands, and I would just control that on my cutter compensation on the the machine. And uh, then make sure you clear all the corners so it not gets snug up in the corners. You could take like a, a black marker and draw inside of either on your edge of your part or inside of the fixture and put it in. And you can kind of like get an idea about where it is, uh, it is binding um, in there. Now, what if your part is a little bit more complex? And that brings me to start talking about soft jaws for your vice. So what I'm talking about when I'm talking about soft jaws is actually jaws that you, you well, you can buy them, but I've always uh, made them myself. So you have a normal jaw on your vise, probably come like with a steel uh, type of jaw here, and I can go in and probably just kind of like show it by finding it. So if I just hide my my custom but so there you can see like the normal size jaw that comes with that so really all i used to do and i used to make my own was to order again aluminum 6061 uh a bar of that and then i would normally make them a little bit bigger uh than the standard jaw but you have to have some counterboards in there that is the same location where um where the normal jaws are so you can just swap them out and then you could make like you know i used to make like 10 at the time or something like that uh, and the neat thing about these is that you of course can uh, machine them so you can machine shapes into them so that's what we're going to do with this one so what i have here is a model that i grabbed out on grabcad it is a supposed to be a toothbrush and it's an imported model so i don't know what for, what they use to model this part up with but we call it a dom solid uh, so let me bring it inside of the part here and let me just use the move command and I'm just going to kind of like get it close here uh, where I kind of want to place it in this soft jaw. Now, um, many people have a tendency to want to place it on the right halfway on the line between the two jaws and then machine the shape into both uh, the movable jaw and the solid jaw. But I actually don't like that. If I can get away with it, I would only machine the shape into one side of the jaw and then just have the other one used uh, as the clamping on it. So that's what I'm going to do here. The reason for that is that if you machine half in both, it just becomes a little bit hard sometimes to pick them up uh, when, when you take them in and out. That's what you always should think about. Now, uh, now I have placed it here. Let me just hide the, the soft jaw. I want to show you something that have nothing to do with this. Be aware of that inside of Fusion, you have some really, really great tools where you can manipulate things, uh, even if it's imported, if it was not modeled up inside of Fusion. So one of the things you can do here, if I zoom in, you can actually just click on a face of these brush holes, I guess it is, and you can just hit uh, delete. 
but it's actually uh, pretty neat. So you can just click on that inside face and you can actually delete it. You can also go in here and use the move command. So even if you bring something in that is, that is imported, you still have tools inside of Fusion to work with it. So don't think uh, that, you know, just because it's what we call a dumb solid that is, you know, we can't use it. You can move it. You can delete things like I'm doing here. Um, or you can also go ahead and, uh, of course, uh, sketch on it and cut it and things like that. Let me just get rid of all these brush holes. Uh, we don't need those for this case here. Just wanted to show you that you're aware of that these tools exist in here. All right. So let's get back to um, our soft jaw. So here I have the soft jaw for this part. Now, one of my favorite commands inside of, um, inside of Fusion 360 is this uh, combine tool. So what I can actually do in here is I can set the, the, the soft jaw as a target and the toothbrush as a tool. And if I leave it checked on so it stays there, then it will remain and don't go away. But here you see what I can do with that. When I unhide the tooth, or when I hide the toothbrush, we're actually kind of carving in that shape into the soft jaw. That is pretty dang awesome, right? Uh, we can get that shape in there. So now we can machine that shape. However, this is not quite ideal if I did it like this. And the reason for that is that there will be all kinds of other material we have to move away. So let's just go back. I'm going to undo that. Control Z, Control C, and, uh, and let's just do it the way I would do it. The first thing I would do before I start doing any removing is actually sketching a pickup hole. Again, I talked about before. How are you going to pick up the part? Think ahead. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, make a little uh, extrusion of a, of a circular sketch and I'm going to extrude that down. And in this case here, you know, we're just going to go, I think we're going eight or something like that. doesn't really matter. Um, and But this hole, I wouldn't just drill it. I would also make sure that I send an end mill in there to make it straight because this is where my G54 uh, is going to be to machine this part. So this is extremely important, right? We could, you know... Go and get the, the part and, and put it in there, machine it, that's all great. But as soon as we take the jaw out of the vise and got to put it back in again, where are we? So make sure you take the time to, to think ahead again and put those pickup holes in there. Now, so what I'm going to do with this model to make it a little bit easier on myself is I'm actually going to uh, change the model a little bit so when I do the combine that I'm, I'm, I'm not just ending up with the shape but actually also carve out some more material. Now to do that, I'm going to go in and sketch on this model here. And if you're fairly new to, you, to Fusion 360, definitely make sure that you spend a few minutes going through the plane options in here. If you know what the powers are of all the, the drop downs in here, that can make your life a lot easier. I ha I'm going to turn my origin on and it is a little bit out of the way on this model because sometimes when I model things up, I'm not uh, that particular about where my origin is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an offset plane from my 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 Z axis plane here. And I'm just going to drag it up, make sure it's above uh, my part. And then I'm actually going to open up a sketch on that offset plane. And I'm going to use the same tools as we used before, the projection tool, to kind of like just go around and make an, a, a projection of the outside of our toothbrush here. Now, when I've done that, I can go in again and use the pull action. Be aware of this cool function there is inside of Fusion 360 um, where you can say match shape. So now when it extrudes down to our toothbrush, it's actually going to fit on that shape. Make sure you, of course, you have join uh, so it becomes uh, one part. So this is kind of like becoming a tool for me to hold on to the toothbrush um, inside of that vise. It takes a couple of seconds for the fusion to calculate this because now there's a lot of math. So with that done, let's open, let's uh, turn on this, the, the soft jar again. And now we can go in and use the combine tool one more time. Um, and now you will actually see that now we have something that looks a little bit more uh, suitable uh, to hold on to uh, to this toothbrush 
after the first operation here. I might still go in and clear a couple of things out. Uh, you might even go in and just use, you know, facing operations to just remove some of the material uh, over in near the brushing head if you wanted to. Uh, so you can get down there and when you machine the second operation. But in the in the big gist of things, I think that you get what I'm trying to get at here on how you can use that combined function to actually create uh, the software. So just to recap here, make sure that when you do this, of course, that you take care of clearances, right? So you will machine this uh, soft jaw um, in, in the in the vise, and then you can place in the part from the first operation in there. And don't forget the pickup hole because something's gonna happen. You're gonna have to take the vise out, put it back in. You wanna be able to pick up uh, that uh, soft jaw again to, uh, to be able to, uh, to machine it. So I hope that you found all this helpful. So first of all, I hope that the, the beginning with the visual of, uh, of how you can hold up a little block against the edge and that makes it easier to pick up the second operation if it's a square block in your vise. The one, the old fashioned way with a fixture where you just projected geometry down. Don't forget that you gotta clear the corners on it um, and you also gotta make sure you have a good, a good pickup point for that. And then the third option where you can use the combined feature inside of Fusion to actually kind of like make a tool of the shape and you can kind of like burn it in like sinker EDM style into that jaw so you can hold on to your second operation. There is also an add-on for Fusion 360 uh, to create soft jaws. Uh, and I might do a video on that a little bit later. I decided not to use it here. And the reason for that is because I do have a couple of restrictions in regards to where your zero zero is. And like I said before, sometimes I'm a little messy with that. So I decided to, you know, maybe I just create another video with that add-in, but you can definitely go and check uh, that out at another point. So again, Thank you so much for watching the whole series of how to learn to use Fusion Cam Basic. And again, I show the link here if you did not have a chance to watch it. Uh, as always, I love your comments. If you have anything to add to this, or any of you guys out there who have a lot of experience with this, please give me your, your comments and suggestions um, in there because we all learn from them. I know I will read them all, and I know the people are actually, uh, other people are reading them too. So that could be really helpful if you have any tips and tricks for that. So until the next time, I hope that you can go and make something and you can machine it and make something cool. Have an awesome day.